Hello, I am Jennifer Igwe, a warm welcome to Newsline. Many thanks for joining us on this edition as we say goodbye to the month of April. Now, growth and development of any nation must be inclusive in such a way that no one is left behind. Children and young people, for instance, must be encouraged to dream and have visions. Nothing should hinder this, particularly for those with disability. On our lineup today, we have a story on young visually impaired Nigerians pushing down barriers to pursue their dreams. Then, if you could turn back the hands of the clock, would you still like your parents or teachers to whip or punish you like they did when you were growing up? Mm. Most African parents, teachers, caregivers, and even neighbors adopt corporal punishment to instill discipline. Are you aware actions like these fall under violence against children? I know many won't agree with this point. Well, International Day to End Corporal Punishment helps to create more awareness on this and why it should stop. And we have a feature on this. Another crucial target for the nation is addressing the rising cases of drug abuse, violence, and crime among young people. We have reports on this. And on positive trends, our correspondents will help us appreciate fascinating cultural festivities, including life-transforming initiatives by brands and sweet love stories. But first, the day's news and Elizabeth Omori is set. Hello, Lizzie. Nice to see you. And I know tomorrow is May 1st, Workers' Day, but I'm sending my greet greetings to you today anyway. Ah, well, magic, magic. It's not Lizzie here today. This is Claire Adela Bapterezak. But I do accept the greetings first. But you know, Jennifer, I would, you would have, you know, offered a handshake. You know what they say about the host handshake, Abby? All right, of course, uh, it affects the roast. Hello and welcome to the news here in our Abuja studio. And we begin right away from uh, Sudan. A Nigerian government is exploring alternative routes to evacuate more than 5,000 Nigerians out of Sudan. Now, this the, the government says is to ensure that her citizens caught in the crossfire in that country leave as soon as possible. Musa Baba Aliu reports. Syria and Egypt have been enjoying a cordial relation since 1961. With this friendship, Nigeria was expecting Egypt to give her helping hand in the time of need. However, reverse is the case when Nigeria requested that the Egyptian authorities open her doors for Nigerians fleeing the war in Sudan. Dr. Saino Gorzo, chairman interministerial committee on evacuation of Nigerians from Sudan, says 637 Nigerians spent three nights at the Egyptian border and were denied entry. It is sad to note that so far it's been three days. All the Nigerians are that at that border have not been cleared yet for reasons best known to the Egyptian government. All high-level consultations are ongoing, and I, I have every reason to believe that it will be positive. The government has identified the port of Sudan as one of the alternative routes to move her citizens out of Sudan. Dr. Saino Gorzo says at, at 6 p.m. Nigerian time, buses from Khartoum are on their way to the port of Sudan, 825 kilometers from the capital. Nobody has been allowed entry, not a single person. Should we continue to amass people in that border? I have reliable information that we are going to get easy access through the difficult passage that we mentioned earlier. We may get an alternate ac access to the Sudanese border. The Joint Committee also gave an update on the allegation that the Nigerian government was unable to settle payment of bus drivers in Sudan. So we paid a deposit. As soon as they received the deposit for 40 vehicles, they calculated exactly the amount we gave, and that is 13 
point something vehicles with an extra about some thousands of dollars, they now stopped attaching. All efforts to get them moved, they said, no, that is deposit. Give us another deposit. <laughs> and that is not the language. We were speaking two different languages. Now that we have understood their language, we have decided to pay everything. Government has therefore appeals and assures Nigerians that no citizen willing to come back home will be left in Sudan. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. All right, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, joins me live in the studio now to shed more light on the situation in Sudan. And uh, Honorable uh, Ambassador, Your Excellency, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. So let's uh, put uh, the situation into perspective. No one seems to understand what's happening at the moment at the Sudan-Egypt borders. Not even the uh, chairman interministerial committee uh, could, you know, give precise explanation of what is going on. Can you put that into perspective for us? Okay, well, first of all, I think it's important uh, to state that we have in Egypt at the moment the Egyptian ambassador to Nigeria he has gone back to Egypt and is helping us to try to facilitate uh, things um, with his government. We also have our own ambassador to uh, Egypt, um, Ambassador Noura uh, Rimi, and he is there with a number of his staff. And also we have some Sudanese who are working in the Nigerian uh, embassy in Khartoum who are also there at the border. It was decided um, you know, when we looked at all the options uh, for evacuation, that the border with uh, uh, Egypt was the one we should uh, choose. Mm -hmm. And uh, we proceeded to that border. We had our people in place to receive uh, the evacuees. Now, um, it would, well, not it would appear, but what we are told by the Egyptian authorities is that they are overwhelmed at the border. So there are huge numbers of Egyptians who are going back and um, people of other nationalities. And um, so they're very security sensitive and, um, and have put in place, obviously, a very rigorous mechanism of... Um, you know, um, going through all the people that are filtering all the people that are coming through that border. Now, um, we've made every effort uh, to get them to allow the Nigerians through. Initially, they said that there was an amount of money that needed to be paid for uh, exit from Sudan, uh, an exit visa out of Sudan, and then an entry visa into Egypt. Now, our uh, embassy there, uh, is, um, is ready to assist uh, to pay these um, uh, amounts of money uh, for those who are already uh, at the border. But, um, but the process uh, has been, well, has, I wouldn't even say slow, it has just not been taking place. Now, um, yesterday I, um, I, I called because they said that they needed security clearance given by the National Security Advisor of Egypt. So I got in touch with our national security advisor, and, um, and he got in touch with his counterpart in Egypt, the national security advisor, and said, listen, we have these number of Nigerians at your border. We're not able to get them through. We have a plane that is coming to Aswan to, to airlift them back to Nigeria. And, um, and a promise was made to him last night that, uh, that they will be uh, escorted through uh, today and nothing happened. Um, I got in touch uh, with the Egyptian ambassador who is there in the Ministry of Foreign uh, Affairs. He told me they're trying to prioritize for the Nigerians to come through, but that it's a very slow process. And uh, it's been extremely, extremely frustrating. And uh, we've uh, tried to get in touch with the, uh, some other very senior uh, Egyptian officials. So that is the situation at the moment. Um, the last I heard from the Egyptian government uh, was that they are uh, um, doing everything possible to get the Nigerians through. But of course, we cannot have a situation where we have a, a, almost a thousand, you know, uh, a Nigerians on the Sudanese side of the border 
um, in the open air and um, you know with with drivers of these buses who are saying that the contract with them was just to deposit them mm. at the border and come back mm. and um, that they were not supposed to be there for two three days so we're going to have to now make some kind of deal with those drivers to stay because we can't uh, you know abandon these uh, these children there mm. so um, so the others who are now in uh, Khartoum um, even more, a 30 yeah. bus load, uh, we're now saying that we'll have to go to Port Sudan, which is still you know, within Sudan, mm. and we have a little bit more leverage uh, there, yeah. and maybe divert our planes to go there and, uh, and collect them. Mm. And I've told them to even start looking at the possibility of those Nigerians who are at the Egyptian border, that if enough progress is not being made there, to also see, unfortunately, if they can now make another trek back to Port Sudan and, um, and then be evacuated from there. I beg to come in here, uh, uh, Your Excellency. I, I, I hear that about 4,000 uh, out of the 5,000 uh, students have been cleared, uh, but are yet to get permission to you know, enter the Egyptian border. And that, of course, uh, some state governments are equally taking this you know, uh, students out of, of, of uh, Sudan. How are they doing that? Um, well, I, you know, if there was a magic uh, uh, formula, uh, we would use it ourselves. So I, I honestly I cannot say we have been in touch with some governors. You can't confirm that to us? I can't confirm that uh, to you because on the contrary, the, 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 the two governors I have spoken to um, are facing the same difficulties. And we're actually looking to us to help to facilitate, you know, um, the, the the crossing of the border. Mm. What, what what does the deployment of NAV aircraft mean for this evacuation process? We hear uh, some of these aircraft have been deployed, you know, to evacuate some of the students. Yes, um, one has landed already on the Egyptian uh, on the Egyptian side of the border, mm -hmm. uh, a C one thirty, you know, and they are there. They came, you know, early this morning. And you know the assumption was that the number of Nigerians would have been cleared and would immediately, you know, uh, board uh, that uh, that that plane. But unfortunately, you know, um, that has not been the case. And uh, and as I said, we are at every single level uh, doing everything possible to to try to get them through. But um, but we have now, as I pointed out, uh, the um, directed that the vast majority of the Nigerian uh, uh, students. Uh, should now be taken to Port uh, Sudan. It's a smaller um, place, you know, and it's quite crowded already with a number of, you know, uh, countries, you know, using that as, um, you know, as a uh, evacuation point uh, mm -hmm. because some of the countries are coming with ships, you know. Um, but, uh, but for us, you know, we'll try to get some space there and then use uh, the planes. I, I, I spoke to, the, um, <clears throat> to our people on the ground uh, to be sure that the uh, airfields there can take C-130s and other big uh, aircraft. So uh, I'm assured that they, they can. So, um, so that's what we're going to have to do mm. since we cannot. It's, I, I must say it's the first time I'm seeing the ambassadors express some sort of frustration over some uh, diplomatic issues. But um, I, I, I'm wondering when you say you're you know, speaking with higher level uh, consultations, can you give us an insight into these levels of convers uh, conversations that are going on? Yes, I mean, well, it's very, very simple. We're saying let, uh, let the Nigerians who are at the border, these are refugees, uh, essentially. Um, okay, if you're insisting uh, on uh, what well, ordinarily we would have expected that there would be a waiver. Mm -hmm. Uh, this would be business of uh, visa uh, out and uh, visas in. Mm -hmm. You know, we would think that in an emergency situation, a conflict situation, that you waive all those things, but apparently not. We said, okay, our people are there mm -hmm. to, uh, to pay them, but we need them to cross that border quickly to get mm -hmm. them out. You just, know, a, just the last question, and this is based on international law. I know the international law on war and conflict, the international uh, humanitarian law, also provides, you know, for those who are caught, you know, between uh, conflicts such as these. Now, my attention is drawn to the fact, uh, to the provision that says that they must be treated with certain form of humanitarian uh, humanity. Does this, is this law binding on, on Egypt? And is it a situation that also applies to what is going on in Sudan? 
Absolutely. I mean, this is a universal law, and uh, all these uh, all the countries are members of the UN, uh, and you have the uh, the law for uh, refugees because these are uh, these are refugees. Uh, refugees flee in conflict, and um, there are international uh, rules uh, regarding you know host countries receiving them, and, um, and 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 not supposed to you know to to flee the danger and not to block them from uh, from escaping. So clearly, yes. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama speaking to us, uh, uh, shedding more light on the situation in Sudan and Egypt borders. We'd like to appreciate you for coming to news tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And the relief much anticipated by Montreal's plan, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, is gradually becoming a reality as contractors complete notorious Opik U turn at Kara section of the highway, Adini Taiwo reports. That's one site that many motorists plying the ever busy Lagos Ibado Expressway are delighted to see at Opik Uton in Ward Kaya Bridge after several episodes of torment in gridlocks around that section. And as the barriers disappear one after the other, leaving more room for them to maneuver, road users, including Shei Olatumbosu, savored their first taste of a new era on the road with a sense of gratitude. I work in Lagos. I live on this side of the road. So I come in every day. I'm going back every day. It makes it easy for me, you know, if, if, if there's a relief. Today we are, we are very happy for today. The road is free. This is a good thing. I just hope that they will be quick with this um, road maintenance. Federal Controller of Works, Lagos State, who supervised the removal of the concrete barriers, applauded the patience and understanding of road users with an assurance that rehabilitation work on the final stretch of the highway between Otodola Bridge and Bega is getting necessary attention and resources. We have the shift that we call the extended shift that works from morning till evening around six, and we have the another team that will be taking over and walking all through the night. With this, it will shorten the period that ordinarily will have been used to complete the little uh, stretch that is left. And while the final stretch of the highway could not be delivered on April 30, as promised, Works and Housing Minister Babatunde Rajifashola had in a press statement appealed for more understanding and highlighted some factors, including holiday breaks to mark two festive seasons as reasons. From the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Adini Itaewo, NT News. And former Governor of Zamfara State and Senator-elect Abdul Aziz Yari Abubakar has cautioned on the part of the governing APC while taking a position on election of presiding officers of the 10th National Assembly. He stated this while speaking to newsmen after an audience with President Mohamed Buhari. State House correspondent at the Mosambo reports. The two-term governor of Zamfara State and senator-elect Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar is one of those aspiring for the presidency of the 10th Senate. His mission here is, however, to felicitate with President Muhammad Buhari on the successful 2023 elections, which saw his party retaining the presidency, majority states, and seats in the National Assembly. He told newsmen he did not inform the president about his aspiration, but what he thinks the APC needs to consider as political maneuvering continues ahead of the inauguration of the new government and indeed the 10th National Assembly. I'm, I'm advising the party that on doing whatever they are going to do, this should look at how best they should do to reward performance, not religion, because the religion is not in, in the constitution of Nigeria. No doubt about it, Nigeria has done what it's supposed to do to APC, and APC shall be a rewarding party. We are going to do the job, and we're going to do the right thing. So if you are contesting the Senate presidency, what are you bringing on board? What can I assure the lawmakers? Well, I am um, transparency. We have to do everything together collectively as colleague and non-partisan. Nigeria post. The former Zamfara state governor is going into the Senate as a ranking lawmaker, having served as member of the House of Representatives before his election as governor. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News.
one aircraft, also called the presidential jet, has left the country for a comprehensive maintenance ahead of the May 29 inauguration of the new president. State House correspondent at the Mosambo reports on President Buhari's last flight on the aircraft, nicknamed the Eagle One. This customized Boeing 737 business jet has been the main aircraft for President Muhammad Buhari. With its comfortability, better experience than imagined, the Eagle One, for nearly eight years, conveyed the president in company of his aides to and from official engagements nationally and internationally. And as Nigeria prepares for a smooth transition to the next administration in less than 30 days, the presidential aircraft has been taken out of the country for a comprehensive maintenance. This is to make it ready for use by the incoming president, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. Consequently, for President Muhammad Buhari, the April 25th trip to Ghana for the third extraordinary session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the Gulf of Guinea Commission was his last on 001. The commander, Presidential Air Fleet, Air Vice Marshal Abubakar Yero Abdullahi was in charge as always. You can see it. Whether I'm flying in this aircraft, or in the helicopter, or in any smaller aircraft, he is the one that picks the pilots and supervises them. So really, to be fair, professionally, they, they, they've been doing their best, and their best has proved to be good enough. President Buhari does not fly alone on 001. Always with him are his personal aides and others whose services are critical to his security, well-being, and functions as head of state, of course, including the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. It is a unique privilege that one will cherish for life to have the opportunity of flying not only with the president, but the number one aircraft in Nigeria. We have traveled in this plane almost around the world, in turbulent weather, in calm weather, all that's the most true. and manned by the pilots and crew members of the Nigerian Air Force and other professionals. It's a privilege for me especially to be called upon to serve the nation. It's an honor touring the world with you. We shall uh, get to see you again. Pending the handover to the new government on May 29th, President Buhari will be flying other aircrafts on the presidential air fleet. Adam Musambu, NTA News. Wow. If wishes were houses, you know what they say, I will certainly write. All right, let's move on now to other stories. And this time, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo is advocating coming together of African governments and leaders in order to develop a common resolve to push the climate positive growth agenda, which emphasizes how the continent can offer solutions to the global climate crisis while attaining economic growth in their various countries. Now, Vice President Oshiba just stated this during a meeting with the Africa Europe Foundation, themed at short 2023 milestone. I said as correspondent Judy Onifadi will bring, so will bring us this report just after we take our commercial break. Stay with us. Keep trending with the Glow Social Data Bundles. Dial star triple seven hash or buy via Glow Cafe. Are you doing cars? 
jewelry, precious metals and stones and luxury boots? Are you into real estate or are you an estate agent, surveyor, valuer, developer or broker? Are you into the hospitality industry, luxury business or are you a market broker, tax consultant or an accountant? Do you have a supermarket, pools betting and consulting or construction company? If you have, go and obtain your certification from the Special Control Unit against Money Laundering, SCUMOL, and be free to do your business within the ambits of the law. SCUMOL has the responsibility to monitor, supervise, and regulate the activities of designated non-financial business and professions, DNFBPs, across the country. Please note that the SCUMOL certificate is not a guarantee of legitimacy of any business. To register, visit www. .org. For collection of certificate, visit any EFCC office nearest to you. Remember, registration is free. School, securing Nigeria's business environment. This message is from Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Fighting here and there, we don't want it at all. Killing people today, tomorrow, we don't want it at all. And we don't want separation. You do your own, I do my own. Make you go. No, 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 no. We don't want that one. We may quarrel and disagree, but let it be on the table of dialogue. No blood, chaos, war, violence. Let us stand with our nation as one people. And we must also stand for the armed forces. They are our husbands and wives. They are our brothers and sisters. Please support the armed forces whose lives are always on the front line to protect our nation. Nigeria is your own, Nigeria is mine, Nigeria is our own. Our uniqueness is in our oneness. Our oneness is our strength. OVMA. Oh, I wish you were here. I'm always with you. But it's not the same without you. Ima <laughs> TN 5G's amazing technology will change how we experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible and remember, no juju, na MTN 5G. On behalf of myself, Senator Dr. Chris Wabweze Ngige, OON, the Honorable Minister of State, Festus Kayamo, SAN, the management and staff of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment and its parastatals, I warmly congratulate the Nigerian workers on the commemoration of the International Workers' Day. We appreciate your perseverance, courage, patriotism, and commitment to improved labor relations and national productivity, as well as your colossal contributions to national development despite the global economic challenges which Nigeria is not insulated from. This year's May Day celebration no doubt has its uniqueness as it marks the end of an administration and the transition to another. I therefore enlist your support in order to make the transition process a smooth and peaceful one. Long live Nigerian workers. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Emosa, Senator Dr. Chris Mwabwezi Ngige, LON, Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment. Welcome back and you're watching the news on Newsline tonight. Let's take the story now from my correspondent, Jide Onifade, uh, in which Vice President Yemi Oshimbaje is advocating coming together of African countries and leaders in order to develop a common resolve to push for a more climate positive growth agenda. The meeting is on the sidelines of the Mo Ibrahim Governance Weekend program in Nairobi, Kenya. At the meeting, the Vice President notes that the climate positive growth agenda is important. Vice President Yemi Shimbato also observes that Africa can be a solution to the net zero ambition. For me, the, the next steps that are crucial uh, first, we need to get African 
departments and heads of states around this agenda. And that is crucial because um, while climate uh, positive growth uh, is the best, uh, obviously, uh, the, the win-win situation for, for Africa and for the rest of the world. He also advocated an equitable and fair carbon market where there will be access for everyone as well as capital to drive the process. I'm very excited about the prospects and I believe that uh, Nigeria will be a very strong partner in, in, the, in, in this journey and I look forward to working with all of our partners in Africa and of course in Europe uh, to make all of this happen. Vice President Chemi Oshimaju held a bilateral meeting earlier with Kenyan President William Ruto. Both leaders agreed that Africans have to shape a narrative on the climate change crisis such that the point of view of the continent is well stated by Africans. They also both expressed the hope that such an African narrative would soon be accepted as it seeks to balance the global perspectives on the issue of climate change. The leaders agreed that the challenges of climate change are real and global, requiring prompt and positive actions. Jide Unifade, and your news. And in other stories now, President Muhammadu Buhari administration is bequeathing to Nigerians a health system that has an emergency capacity for rapid response in line with modern technology. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed stated this in his Uru country home in Kwara State when inaugurated an 80-bed capacity medical facility. Here is Anthony Fawson with the report. The hospital facilitated by the minister was built under the office of the SDG. Lai Mohammed said the outgoing administration is determined to expand universal health coverage for all Nigerians. The 80 bed being commissioned is equally equipped to promote the health of mothers and children. It has a theater, incubators, ventilators, phototherapy machines, patient monitor, children beds, examination beds, 100 kPa generator, furnished and lit with solar street lights. The minister pointed out that such healthcare facilities are dotted across the state. This development is in line with Mamadou Buhari's administration's commitment to providing health facilities to cater for the needs of Nigerians. Let me commend the SDG's office for the giant strides it has recorded in the provision of social services across the country, particularly in remote places. President Mohamedou Buhari has made a commitment to lift millions of people out of poverty within a decade. And in order to achieve this, we must prioritize our intervention with multidimensional effects, such as basic health care, life skill development program, education, job opportunities, and one of the critical important infrastructure that was mentioned by Alaji Lai Mohammed that is going to be deployed to this community to address goal seven of the SDG. The minister had earlier commissioned a 40-bed multipurpose hospital in Ibaja, which was also funded by the office of the SDG. The minister is in his Oro country home to commission projects which he facilitated in Oro, Kwara State. Anthony Forson, NTA News. And the chief of the air staff, Air Marshal Isiaka Oladayuamo, has attributed the relative peace the nation is enjoying presently to operational successes of the Air Force, which he says resulted in massive surrender to ground troops at the theater of operations. He was speaking at the 59th NAV Interdenominational Service here in Abuja. Francis Foam was there. <laughs> The Protestant choir setting the tune for the service. 
This service celebrates in Thanksgiving with the Nigeria Air Force at 59. This military formation's appreciation is not just to gold, but to the federal government for the support provided in facilities that bolstered air operations of the military. We are returning all the money back to God for having sent the service through these 59 years. For those that have been directly involved in various efforts to tackle various insecurity blighting our, our nation, I say a big thank you for the successes we have recorded so far. The message on the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 1 to 10, officers and men of the service were encouraged that the dawning situation of the past is a stepping stone for the service. Our celebration today is not just because we have got 59, no. It is not only because of the exploits and successes that we have delivered on target, no. It is because of the hope and the faith we have that God will never abandon us tomorrow. Though they've jumped a lot of hurdles in the past, with the possibility of many more ahead, they give thanks and pray. And today is now as we all the way. The power of death has been defeated. With the team, doctrinal imperative for successful Nigerian Air Force operations, NAV at 59 anniversary celebrations will hold between May 4th to 7th at NAV Base MNA in Enugu State. Franks is from NTA News. And uh, News Just A now says the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has struck out the EFCC criminal charge against former Minister of Aviation Femi Fani Kaudi. Justice Isiago gave the order at the resumed trial of the matter in Lagos. The court also held that the traveling document of the defendant should be returned to him. The order of the trial court followed the decision of the Court of Appeal which quashed all the counts preferred against Femi Fani Kaudi by the EFCC. And President Muhammad Buhari joins other Nigerians to felicitate with veteran diplomat Ambassador Bogodo Heise as he turns 77. Sending his best wishes to Ambassador Heise, the President appreciates the wisdom and perspectives of the Ambassador on various issues of diplomacy and international relations which have been of tremendous benefit to the nation. President Buhari celebrates the distinguished citizen's connection with every section of the society and the honor his diplomatic experience and other activities has earned him globally. The president wishes him good health and prosperity. And veteran journalist and popular columnist Peter Inahoro has passed at the age of 88. Fondly known by his pen name, Peter Pan, Peter Inaro died in London, the United Kingdom, on Monday, April the 24th. Best described as one of Africa's best columnists, Peter Inaro joined the Daily Times in 1955 at the age of 27. He became the youngest journalist to edit Nigeria's iconic newspaper, the Daily Times, in 1962. He rose to become editor-in-chief of the Daily Times in 1966, and he still pursued his editorial passion even after he left Nigeria for Germany and later London, where he settled until his demise. And that ends the news from here in Abuja. Jennifer Igwe, who is anxiously waiting for Workers' Day tomorrow, takes over from here. Jenny, it's over to you. Over to you.